to you. I'm Hayley Palmer. It's so good to have you on tonight's show, especially as we are joined by Peter Connor and Al McKenzie from D Ream. And here is what happened when I caught up with Peter. Peter, it's great to have you on the show. How are you? Hello, I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Yes, I'm very good, thank you. It's a real honour to have you here. And uh, obviously, we're coming out of lockdown now. I know you've been so productive and busy. Uh, what's yeah. been going on your end? Well, just for the sake of our sanity, Alan and I stayed in our own bubble and we got busy recording a new album. Yeah. I, I know that a lot of artists have done this and it just makes sense, really, because when the phone's not ringing and people aren't hassling you, um, you can just get on with it, <laughs> which is what we did. Yeah. So yeah, we had a lot of fun um, considering Time's all things really considering. Creative. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Fantastic stuff. Well, uh, we're going to kick off uh, the show with Things Can Only Get Better. And in lockdown, it was so funny because I kept putting on the radio and I just kept hearing this song so hey. much. And I saw a clip <laughs> of... Uh, the uh, and people clapping for the NHS. Oh, yeah. Clap and then for carers, yeah, the, that's right. Yeah. Yes, and then they were yeah. playing your song afterwards. Yeah, that was uh, that was really quite touching. Yeah, I'd never. It's taken on a life of its own now. So many people find different uses for it. I've even seen a, a women's cancer trust uh, did a kind of lockdown, you know, multi video thing as well. And some people are covering yeah. it. And it's lovely to see it uh, have resonate with people that way. It really is. Yeah, and I saw uh, Jack Whitehall used it as well, didn't he? Well, that was, <laughs> I was initially like, <laughs> I wasn't pleased. <laughs> But uh, oh. we, we, we've gone from the highs to the lows. And if you do look up <laughs> yes. the sketch, you'll know what I mean about lows. Yeah, he used it. Uh, <laughs> he used it uh, just as uh, he was reading. Wasn't he reading Piers Morgan's uh, biography <laughs> yeah. on the loo? And he realised he'd run out of loo paper. And then my song came on and someone handed him the biography <laughs> and he was going to use that. It was something like that, wasn't it? <laughs> Man, that guy's so, he's so well, funny. Then, moving on from that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, moving on. And uh, I mean, this has been released three times, hasn't it? Yeah, it, it, it took a while before people got the information. <laughs> you know, you have to sort of keep keep getting, getting again and again until yeah. it arrives. And because uh, often you don't know the band's name, you don't know the artist, you don't know the song, you haven't made that connection. It takes a while for people to build up that yeah. that knowledge. And uh, yeah, no, it, it got there eventually <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> after the take that tour. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, yeah. uh, we're going to play it out on the show now. So we want everyone okay. singing along full blast at home. And uh, we'll see you after this. Can only get better. I want to rewind, Peter. I always love asking mm -hmm. people how everything started. Was there a moment that you just thought, yes, I want to get into the music industry? Oh, God, no. I've been doing music my whole life. I found out I was adopted. Then when I met my natural mother, I found out she was the lead singer in a band and he was the guitar player. So it's just something I've always wanted to do. It's a vocation, I suppose, that's one way of looking at it. It's just that yeah. uh, the band that worked for me was Doreen. You know, I've been in several bands. I was yeah. in an indie band and, you know, doing all sorts of production work for various people. But when I met Alan, that's that's when we sort of, they call it chemistry in the industry. We hate that word, but <laughs> that's, it just worked. And uh, it, yeah. he sort of, he just lit, lit something up in me. And when we when we did stuff together, people just went, went crazy for it. I've done stuff on my own even since and people are going, you know, I get the... Nice one, Pete. Nice try. But when we, we work oh. together and we do stuff, it just does that extra thing. I don't know. I suppose that's what makes Doreen Doreen. You know yeah, I mean? it's quite unusual, really. I mean, it's really unique because, you know, it's quite hard to form that partnership, but it's just genius. It just really works. Yeah, yeah. And so when I got to a point where, um, you know, I was in London in the early days of the house music scene in the 90s, I was really struggling to try and get this. I was working on You're the Best Thing and um, it just wasn't sitting, you know, the way it needed to be for for nightclub. So when I played it to Alan, he came over and um, uh, he smoked something very strong and uh, ate a whole a packet of hobnobs, I think. And oh, uh, by the end of Can't that, he wrong. told me, no, he said, make that kick drum last for 32 bars. Now, I don't know if you, that's like watching paint dry if you're into songwriting and, and radio. But I said, what, what, what's that about? He said, well, that's not for you. That's for other DJs so they can they can lock on. And I was going, wow, this is so cool. I mean, because that means like we're going to have it on vinyl. That means they know how to lock on. They'll be able to cross over from other records. I just learned so much in that one session. And the first track we worked on together was You're the Best Thing. Yeah. Well, talking of You're the Best Thing, uh, we're going to play it out on the mm -hmm. show now. I know it brings back a lot of memories for people at home. So check this out. And that we will see you after this. You're the best thing. Now, Peter, I want to talk about your new exciting single, Many Hands. Now, this has been taken uh, from your album, Open Hearts, Open Minds. Yes. It's a really uplifting song. I listened to it earlier. What was the exact meaning behind this? Um, you know, you get it's hard to write positive stuff. We're associated with positive stuff as a yeah. grump, grumpy 55-year-old, you know. And I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking about it because... Um, 
I just got this idea in my head about how I got to where I was, but only by the good grace of others. Aww. And it's kind of an homage to all of the people that we all have in our lives who, I don't know, they become mentors or they become guides and they, they show you the way, if, even if it's your, just your parents. And having yeah. been a parent myself, I've seen what those guiding hands do. So it became like this thing which stayed, be, stayed with me for ages until I finally found the form to, to, to sing it in, if you know what I mean. But I have a very early demo of it. I, I'll yeah. sing them on my phone. Um, of me just getting up one morning going, many hands, da, da, da. I was like, okay, right, okay, something yeah. there. And uh, the thing is, yeah. we, we kind of done something really unusual with the form on this one. It's not following standard pop structure. Um, we kind of just let, I let it wander. In fact, most of the second half of the of the record was based on a, a, a an ad lib that I did. I just sang it yeah. from from the heart and it came out in one go. And we kind of thought, let's not let's not start, start working that into something. Let's just leave it as an ad lib. And that's what happened. So no, yeah. we're very, very pleased with it. Yeah, no, you should be. It's absolutely brilliant. And the video, how did that come about? You know, what was the meaning of right, so that? All right, so we're in we're in lockdown, and of course we can't uh, get over to London. We can't. No one can do anything. So I just asked the band to film themselves. So th th you know, right. that's all of their sons and daughters uh, pointing phone phones oh, at it? them. Then I we brought that. it over here. Now Alan and I learned Final Cut Pro in lockdown because we just had to, of course, as you do. And so that that's been a real joy. And then I realised, having spent nearly a hundred grand on some videos in the past, how much uh, I've been done. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we learned a lot. We, we put it together here, and uh, yeah, the, the results. Um, I think we've done really well. We went a bit mad, I think, with the effects. But um, no, it's, that, it's fantastic. That, that's just what you do when you got a new toy, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I can totally relate to that. Well, we're going to check yeah. out uh, the video uh, to many hands, and everyone, get involved. It's a great song with a great message. Uh, enjoy this.
really want to play this one. This is actually my favourite D Ream song, uh, mm. Shoot Me With Your Love. And okay. as soon as I hear this, I just literally want to get up and party. It's so good, isn't it? Yeah, uh, well, you know, um, uh, obviously Robbie Williams thought so because he did his version of Let Me Entertain You based on my song. Um, oh. You know, you, you know, go and listen. There's some very kind comments on the inter internet. Uh, basically, I, listen, I was working with a guy called Tim Hegarty. He's an old friend of mine from one of my, my, my previous indie bands. And he played me that chorus and I just went mad for it. I thought, that's it. And yeah. You know the way we were kind of into like the, the loved up vibe of the 90s? I thought just, could you could Cuba just like shoot me with this stuff? This is just that charge, that positivity. And so I went and I went again and I wrote, wrote the verses and sort of shaped it together to get to get that hit record. And we, I think it went to number seven, was it number seven in the UK charts? It was great. No, it was great fun doing. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's got that kind of um, uh, sympathy for the devil possibly or something like an Elton John vibe to it as well. So no, it's, it's just really epic. Yeah, yeah. My only problem is now when we sing it live, people think I'm singing Robbie's tune. So <sighs> um, I, I kind of put them both together. <laughs> <laughs> just to play with it Brilliant. yeah yeah it's fun yeah, yeah. No, it's a real fun song uh, so we're going to play that out on the show now uh, but we want to remind cool. everyone to check out your single Many Hands because it's a great song uh, and also uh, the album which I'll be talking more uh, with Al about later on in the show but it's been lovely to chat oh. with you and you well good luck with your new venture ah oh, <laughs> you too guys it's an absolute right. pleasure to have you on the show it's Peter Tyler everyone Great to have you on the show. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. And uh, obviously, I know you have been very productive in lockdown, obviously mm -hmm. coming out of lockdown now. Uh, what's been going on your end? Well, Peter and I have just um, essentially been finishing off an album for the yes. last of July. So. Yes, yeah, really good. exciting. Mm. Absolutely. Well, we'll be talking a little bit more about that uh, later on in the show. Uh, but for now, uh, we're going to talk about a song called All Things to All Men. Mm -hmm. I know this was from your last album. That's right, yeah. uh, so tell us a little bit about this track. It was just, it was the first, the well, second track we did for the last album, which was about 2009, I think, it started. It came, in, came out 2011. It's just, it's one of my favourite songs off that album. I just think it's a really nice song. Peter. Peter mainly wrote it himself, to be fair, but it's... Uh, right, okay. But I think, yeah, I was, we'd had, we hadn't met each other, we hadn't seen each other since about 1995, we met up. <laughs> and we, and so was I, that I like? Do, it was strange, and it was, it, it was yeah. quite a reason, uh, he'll probably tell the story as well, it was quite a reason because I'd been out all night and I met him in the park, and he was out <laughs> in the morning with his kids, so I was out with some sort of young kids just sort of chilling out. <laughs> It was sort of like two opposites, you know, and then and we just met. Pete came back about an hour later. Do you have Mackenzie? And I was like, Oh God, it's you! And so, you know, and then we just um, we clicked. So let's make an album. Just, let's make some music. Yeah. And we did that. And I used to I was because I'm a DJ and I was using a lot of my beats. And he had written these songs, more guitar bits. But yeah, and we just put it together and it came out really well. And I really like it. Yeah, yeah. Well, we really, really like it here on the show too. So we're gonna have a little look at the video, and uh, we will see you after this.
Open mind. Yeah. What can we expect from this? It's uh, an event we've been following us, and the last album. It's, it's a bit more back to our original sound. See when we started, but we've, we've gone a bit more piano. I think last time we used like guitars and stuff. This one we've got more piano, more strings. Very uplifting. There's a few slower songs. Yeah. In fact, a lot of slower songs, but they do, but they're. Um, they're all uplifting, hope, positivity. That's what it's all about. We've, we've kept away from... Yeah, we need that. Well, we, especially what's been going on. And, and it's, it's weird, yeah. actually, because we started this album a few years ago. But two years ago, we were really hitting it. And then, obviously, COVID happened. And it's some of the songs on it, some people think we wrote them because COVID. Because of COVID. It's not. It's just the way it's turned out. Right. So so yeah. we, we, haven't, we haven't used that, you know. And one of them, like Meet at Midnight, kind of, it's almost like a lockdown song. With it. it was never intended, yes. never intentional. But it wasn't intended no, to. No. Oh, well, we're going to have a, a little look at uh, Meet Me at yeah. Midnight. I mean, this has got kind of a 90s vibe, yeah. but it's kind of got a modern twist, hasn't well, that's, it? that's kind of what I was saying, going back to our sort of original sound. It, it has mod because we've got better, become better producers and, you know, and, and I'm, we're into our dance music and stuff now, but we have that 90s feel about it. We are getting old. So we it's, no, it's, So we, I think we've we somehow managed to retain that 90s sound, yet yeah, yeah. keeping it a bit fresh. Yeah, exactly. Well, we're going to check out the video and uh, to remind everyone that your album uh, is released uh, through Radar Music on the 23rd of July. So uh, check it out and we'll see you after this. Stepping out 
questions from some of our lovely Saturday night viewers, Al. Uh, Marie would like to know who actually thought of the name D-Ream? <laughs> well, oh, it's, it's funny because we, we were actually, with, um, we started making music and we had some gigs because I was had some, running some clubs and we had some gigs and we desperately needed a name and we it literally <laughs> was a last minute thing. So we just sat there and brainstormed. And I, I have a thing, because the music was quite ethereal and sort of sounding, I have to say it was Jim Academy, Life in a Northern Town, a song out then. And we sort of thought, oh, Jim, Jim, Jimmy. And then we thought, a band would be called Dream. We just put the colon in, really stupid, with the internet coming out and everything. It means you couldn't actually get, couldn't find us, because it just came up as Ream and stuff, which then we had a big gay following, and it was all these things, connotations about that, and it was just like, none of it intentional. And Pete has a thing about, the Gene Boys. Oh, me which too. I'm not sure to read, <laughs> what I really want to be used. You know, really want to use it. It's, it's, it's the reason for using the name. But so I think between us, we we came up with the name for different reasons. Right. Basically. But it yeah. works, and we well, like it. It is. So. It is yeah. Absolutely. Um, and my next question is from Simon. He would like to know, was Professor Brian Cox, who plays the keyboard <laughs> in uh, Dream, uh, talking about cosmolo cosmology a lot? Um, well, it's funny how I speak to someone about this recently. Pete and, Pete and Brian were quite good mates, and Pete sort of drafted him in to do some live gigs. For, to, and I, I, to, well, it's just for kind of four hours sort of left, but, and I, I I didn't even know Brian was into science. Really? Because I think I did I did enjoy myself a bit too much back then, and so I probably wasn't really that <laughs> interesting. But people tell you that him and, that they, they did talk about science a lot, later on but when we were on tour but I, I, I'd gone by then I was off doing my DJ and stuff but I yeah. never ever knew that he was into no. it and, got, and it's really sad really I think that I didn't know that <laughs> Brilliant and the last question from Lee uh, what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given in your career? Uh, best piece of advice is probably stick to the day job but you know. <laughs> No uh, I mean I, I'm, it's normally me giving out advice to people rather than taking advice. I, I mean, I never, really, I came from a non-musical background, so I, I yeah. was sort of thrown in at the deep end. Yeah, it's the best way sometimes, isn't it? It's yeah, got to be exactly. done. And uh, we're going to go into uh, your song, Take Me Away. I know mm -hmm. this brings back a lot of memories for people. What <laughs> memories does it bring back for you, Al? Well, it was just good times. I mean, that, that was one of yeah. the first first chats we did when we were doing our first PA. It's just Pete, me and a packing singer. With a little, no, my, well, not miming, but uh, the, the backing music. That was one of the first tunes we did. You're the best in that track called Call Me. I think it's put on the second up. Yeah, and they, they, so it was just happy times. You know, big piano, yeah. seven just jumping around, not caring. You like that. Yeah, good. yeah, good times. We like that on the show. Uh, well, here it is at number 18 in 1994. <laughs> Go into the last song uh, today, which is Unforgiven, uh, which you co wrote, didn't you, Al? Yes, it's a weird story. We, we actually we were signed to Rhythm King Records, um, and they had a band they were trying to promote, and they asked us to remix them. The, uh, the Shaw Twins were called, didn't do anything. But we did the chat for them, and we did the backing track. We loved the backing track so much so that we decided they didn't want to give them the remix, so we kept the backing track. <laughs> And then Pete wrote, right, put some lyrics on it, rang it. So they weren't very happy with us. But oh. we, we loved it. So so we, but, because it was, I think of off that album, it's the most, most dancey tune of the album. Like yeah. more sort of underground, yeah. let's say. Got less underground, so I was adding the pop vocals to it. But yeah. it was, yeah. That's well, so it's, yeah, it's quite, it's a good a way one. to finish the show. So we're going to play that out for everyone now. Uh, but we want to remind everyone at home uh, to check out your new song, Many Hands, which is out now. And uh, your new mm -hmm. album, Open Hearts, Open Mind, which is out on the 23rd of July. But thank you, Al. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure as well. Ah, oh, it's Al McKenzie, everyone, from the D-Ring. Here I am. Oh, it's been great to have Peter Connor and Al McKenzie from d Ream as tonight's special guest on the show. And thank you to you for tuning in and supporting the show. It really is very much appreciated. Now, we're going to leave you with Saturday Night's Song of the Week. And I will see you same time, same place next week. Hi, Jack Howitt here. Thank you so much, Hayley, for choosing my song Better Days as your Saturday Night Song of the Week. The music video you're about to see, I shot with cinematographer Russell Kent Nichols. And it's for my latest single called Better Days. I hope you enjoy it. And thank you once again for choosing Better Days as your son of the week. I keep waking up on the far side of this bed. Roses in my hands, but I give you thorns instead.
And I don't really wanna be me right now Cause I don't like to love you when I'm bitter and I'm broken down So I've been quiet, sitting in silence, slipping these months away I know you feel it, but when I'm chilling, it's the only place I wanna stay Some under your skin, my body at your feet. Oh, Cause I don't even really know me right now. And I'm not used to feeling like I'm falling, like I've let you down. Mm -hmm. So I've been quiet, sitting in silence, slipping these miles away. I know you. When I'm dreaming, it's the only place I wanna stay Sleeping these months away I know you feel it But when I'm dreaming It's the only place I want to stay So I've been quiet Sitting in silence Sleeping these months away I know you feel it But when I'm dreaming It's the only place I want to stay 